Uh, I like this game a lot more than I expected. It's a low poly strategy colony management game where you hop in between planets with rockets. You conquer them, you take over them, you protect them from aliens and stuff like that. And honestly, it's not much of a looker, like, but it manages to be pretty and fun at the same time without having to be. And so anyway, let's dive straight on in and we'll check the game out. Our world's name will be World Worldlandia, the most original of names. And then we'll start in spring, we'll keep everything over here, we'll go with a meet a sprawling galaxy. Yup, that sounds good to me, let's go. Let's do this. And so our rocket impacts Deer Planet. Here we are. Yep, with our little meeple guys. There they are. All uh, they're all piling out of. The, I think we got a couple of children with us too, right? Yeah, we got two children. All right. And so we can pause the game. Uh, that your tiny band of colonists has fled a crowded and oppressive homeworld in search of an ideal planet on which to start a new civilization. But even after years of wandering, you've never found one. Now with your ship malfunctioning and supplies running short, you are forced to land in a remote and hostile galaxy. You have food and fuel to last only a short amount of time and almost no building materials. Can you make this strange new world your home? A strange new world. Okay, and so we've done that. Uh, we need to click and drag with the right mouse button to do that right there. And then it also wants me to use the recenter button, which is like right there, I think. Cool. Uh, now that we've done that, it wants us to harvest some wood and also get some stone. Luckily, we've started out on this planet that's actually pretty easy to do that on. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad, I think. I think we should be pretty good right there. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go to, I think it's in this menu, right? Nope, this menu right here. There we go. And then we can gather wood. So we'll tell them to, and we can actually shift click to make that go a little faster too if we want to. We can actually put down multiple harvesting circles. If we're really in the mood to do it. I like this planet. This planet is a lot better than the last planet I played. The last planet I played, there was like no there was no stone on the initial island. And then the next wood, after we got rid of all the wood on our island, was like way off in a corner. It was like crazy far away. And so we're going to get all this wood right here. And then we're also going to get all of this stone with our stone harvesting. And hopefully that will get us a little bit of iron, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I just want to get started on having resources. So that's done right there. As you can see, our little meeple guys are going out and they're gonna start converting all these trees into little wooden cubes, just like a board game. In a lot of ways, that's what this game reminds me of too, is it kind of feels like a board game that's been stretched out of the turn-based sphere and put into like real time, and I like that about it. I'm a big board game fan in real life. I love board games. I never get to play board games because nowadays when you ask somebody if they wanna play a board game, most people are like, well, why don't we just play a video game or something? It's been a real problem, but I love board games. Arkham Horror, uh, Runebound, all that kind of stuff. I love, 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 love board games. I think they're a lot of fun. Catan, all that kind of stuff. Enjoyable. Although I do think Arkham Horror is probably the best board game ever made. It's actually, Arkham Horror is the best board game ever made, so long as the people playing it have never played before. If you've played before and you've learned how to win at Arkham Horror... It's basically you just telling everybody else what to do so that you can win. Because it's it's a game where like six players are playing against the board itself, which has a timer and everything. And so, if you're experienced with the game, you can basically play everybody else's turns for them. Which tends to end up happening in an experienced group so that you win. But I don't like playing like that. I like playing with people that are new, who make mistakes and like, they kind of play with a bit of whimsy and a bit of fear. Uh, you only have enough food on your ship to last you a short time. You should begin constructing farms and or boats to produce food. Boats can catch a small amount of fish year-round, while farms can produce much more food per year. But farm crops must be planted in spring, and they won't be harvestable until fall. Any plants that aren't harvested by winter will be lost. Okay, well, let's plant some weed fields over here. I think it's a good idea. And so we've got our farmland. That looks like a decent spot for a farm. And then the other thing we're going to need is we're going to need some houses. We need some places for our people to live. Otherwise, they're not going to breed and they're not going to multiply. And we sort of want that to happen. That's a very, very good thing for us. And so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try and have all of the houses kind of going around the farm area. 
because that makes me feel a lot more, I don't know, I like when things are organized. When you have like a real township area and then the farm is over here, we'll probably put another one in right here. Uh, fisherman's boat's probably a good idea, but just be warned, you're going to need workers to get a lot of this stuff done. And so once we have the farm built, for example, you've got to assign one of your little people to it so that they'll go and work the farm. And in fact, you'll probably see, after all this hauling, one of these little guys will go over here and start tearing up the grass and start planting crops. However, for the moment, I'm trying to store up goodies. So we've got a little bit of iron, we've got a little bit of stone, that's good. This game has wonderful economic menus, in case you're wondering about that, where you can learn what you've harvested during the course of, like, any given year, and you can figure out where your deficits are and whether or not you're bleeding out or whether things are going well. It's just sort of, you know, the game is presented very, very well, and honestly, it's got a lot of common with Kingdoms and Castles, too. Like, if you took Kingdoms and Castles and you got rid of a lot of the graphical flair and you added a whole bunch more strategic depth, I think you would have this game. Like a bunch more things. Like, this is more of a colony manager, I guess, than Kingdoms and Castles is. Kingdoms and Castles is kind of a city builder, so. Let's see here. Mission complete. We've acquired rudimentary building supplies. Now we should think about how to begin building our new home. We will. Don't worry. Uh, I've already actually set up for them to build houses, so that should no longer be a concern. We should just have a whole bunch of hauling left to do right now. Some of our cubes, yeah, there goes our farmers right there. And as you can see, they're going to go through, they're going to kill off all this grass, and then in just a minute, like in RimWorld, they're going to go through planting each individual crop. Maybe. Or they're just going to leave. I don't know. It's possible they might do one or the other. Your peebs require houses to live in. In winter, your peebs will need homes and a supply of energy to heat them, or they will freeze to death. Make sure you have both before the winter comes. Fun fact, if you have extra housing, your population will gradually grow. It's true, and you do want your population to grow, because never, like almost every single building in this game requires workers, and you're at a very real stopgap as far as your productivity goes if you don't have workers. And so hopefully they'll get that done. I'll probably put in like one fishing place. We are going to need a power supply for this because in the winter people will freeze to death inside their houses if you don't supply them with some kind of like power grid. And so there goes our little houses right there. They're starting to spring up. Hell yeah. He's almost done with that one right there. And as you can see, they take a little bit of wood into their houses so that they can heat them and they can be comfortable and all that kind of fun stuff. Good things. Uh, somebody should come over here and do this farm, please. Like, I'm okay with reducing the amount of people that work over here, but I need y'all to stop hauling, and I need you to start planting, because the spring season is almost over. It's active, right? Why aren't they planting it? Did we miss our season already? What's the calendar day right now? What day is it? There's a calendar in here right here. So I can check the season... Oh, it's fall. It's not spring anymore. Oh, we have real food problems then. Uh, we have food issues. Let's maybe think about solving that then. I'll probably put in a fisherman's boat. Like over here. There we go. I guess we missed our planting season. That's really, really bad. Uh, I'm not going to assign anybody to that place just yet. But I am going to look around for more fish. We've got one quality fishing spot right there. And we've got some sub-average fishing spots over there. Okay, we might starve to death. This might not be good. This might be very, very bad. I have my doubts that these fishermen are going to be able to hold us all through the winter, but they've got three fish inside that fishing area, so that's good. That fish just phased through a wall like some kind of fishy X-Man, though. Uh, your civilization needs a source of energy. Houses need to consume energy in the winter to stay warm, while factories, workshops, and mines consume energy in order to produce goods. You should build a furnace to begin producing energy. Okay, we also need storage. Do I have a silo around here somewhere? Because I feel like I'm going to need one. Silo, where is the silo? There it is. So we've got ourselves a storage barn right here. I'd say just put the storage barn over there. That'll be perfectly fine and doodly dandy. Now we've got a big old forest over here. I'm going to ask some of my peebs to come deforest this over here. Not completely. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of deforestation. We don't need to completely and totally annihilate the environment. But we do need to do some damage to it in order to spur society forward. That's how this has worked since the dawn of mankind. Sometimes you got to mess with society a little bit in order to make it work. And then this will be the area where we put our... Yeah, we'll put our furnace over here. This furnace, it will provide us with electricity. However, it can't be near any of our residential stuff. 
So really one of the things you do want to do in this game is you want to kind of have like a residential island. And then you kind of want to have like an industrial island that's away from everything else. And then you want to have an island that you don't touch at all and you let the trees regrow. And you let nature come back. And you kind of use it as a preserve and you kind of selectively harvest it. Like you wipe out the forest a little bit, but then you let it regrow as well. Like you don't completely and totally get rid of every single tree. Otherwise problems happen. I'm going to put a whole bunch of workers on that fishing boat because we don't have much of a choice. Our food is going to decrease rapidly if I don't. Like muy, muy rapido. So, let's take care of it. Your peeps work more efficiently if they have appropriate tools. Try building a workshop to produce tools and boost productivity. Nope, don't have time for that right now. That is not something that I'm interested in, although we've had a new child born. So that's really cool. We got ourselves a new kid. It's pretty fun. Over here, how long is that going to take? they will dropping off like five blocks at a time. Good. All right, so finish that off. We'll assign one peeb to work over here, and then we'll think about what our next step is. I've got more fish over on this side. I don't know if you need fish inside your fishing area. Like, I don't know if that actually matters, or if they fish the same no matter what. I honestly don't know. It's one of those things that I haven't really isolated. Uh, we'll let that burn whatever it wants to burn. We've got 174 electricity right now. These houses are going to start consuming electricity pretty soon, but it's okay. This is going to start producing it. Hopefully we get a nice backlog before winter gets here of electricity. And then we'll be all solid to go. Other things we can play around with. Uh, there are armories where we can give weapons to our guys. We can have dumps and things like that that we can kind of put out here to get rid of the refuse that goes with kind of harvesting and things of that nature. I don't think this island's going to be of much use to us. But then again, I don't want to be spent like sending people over there to do that very often. I guess I'll just put the dump right there. We'll keep everything isolated in our little industrial area. And this is just a place for them to take the trash once you have mines. Uh, when you get like you get like slag stone and stuff like that once you have mines. And it just kind of builds up unless you have a dumping area. And then they just take it here and it disappears. And what do they want me to do? Use farms and boats to build up a store of 1,000 food. Grow the population to 30 peebs. And build a fort for defense. Yeah, we may struggle a little bit with the whole fishing thing. Us not getting a planting season is kind of bad. It's less than satisfactory. I'll put a fishing boat right there. It seems like we have fish kind of squirreling around. We're going to need more food, though. Like, we're not getting nearly enough food from this guy right here. I'll leave a worker on it. I don't know if he's produced 25 food. We'll probably need another boat down and over here. It's a little costly and time-consuming. But I don't think there's going to be much of an option there. Otherwise, we may not make it through this winter. Perfect. So that's done now. We'll assign a peep to it. I do think the game needs a little bit better organization as far as, like, who's working where. It needs, like, a menu kind of like RimWorld has that tells you who's doing what job or, like, Nomoria has. So that you've got, like, a big list of, like, okay, so I've got five citizens. It may have one of those, in all honesty. It's entirely possible that it might. There's a population menu right here, but, yeah, it doesn't tell you, like, what jobs these five people are doing. And if you have a surplus of workers or not. And that's one of those things that I would very much like to have uh, before I go too much further into the game. Good. And so our fishermen are fishing. That's going to be year-round. Hopefully it's enough to support our population for right now. I don't know if electricity needs to be taken back to the base. Or if it kind of just does its own thing. But I'm hoping it does its own thing. So there goes five more food. Yeah, it looks like we're starting to gain a little bit. So we're getting 65 by boat right now in the last year. 75 eaten by peeves. I can take, like, losing 10 food. Ten fishies being lost is not really that big of a deal considering we have an ocean of fishies in front of us. But I'm going to go through and we're just going to kill off this forest right here. I'll leave that one though so that the place has some kind of island of wood that will start to regrow over time. Our storage is looking pretty solid. They should just take this all over to here and dump it, I think. And it looks like the children can actually help out with chopping trees, which is good. Because when I was 12 or 13, I chopped down trees with my dad when they had to go down. Back in the olden days, sometimes you got to chop down a tree. Sometimes that tree got to go. Sometimes that tree is just in the wrong place at the wrong time. 
it really sort of varies and depends, but sometimes a tree got to go. Good. As soon as that's finished off, we should have a big supply of wood after that's done. Once we get a little bit more population over here... Oh, good. We got another adult. Fantastic. We're going to put mines and things over here, too, so that we can mine that area. I may also put in another farm on this side. I don't know how close to the edge over here I can get. I can actually use every square except for that square right there, so that's perfect, actually. We're going to make really, really, really good progress on this first island. And I'm so glad to say it, too, because the last time I played through, my first island was just terrible. And so I felt like I was always bouncing around in between islands trying to do stuff. In addition, I placed things in kind of not smart areas because I hadn't played the game before. And so, like, I didn't plan very well. I kind of just built willy-nilly and hoped for the best. There is a limited supply of coal and iron on a tiny planet that you currently inhabit. Over time, these resources will be depleted. Your old spaceship may be too broken to continue exploring the galaxy, but with a launch pad, you can make a new ship and colonize additional planets. In the far reaches of space, you may even find or discover renewable resources of energy and raw materials. That'd be pretty sexy. Kind of catapult us forward on the evolutionary clock. Uh, so we've got a coal mine. Wait, what was that right there? What was I doing? Hold on. So I can make a quarry. I can make a coal mine, and I can make an iron mine. Let's start with a coal mine real quick. But we're just going to try to keep that real high and tight right there. And I'm pretty sure they'll just build a coal mine right there. Once we have the coal mine, might be a good idea to have a quarry. I don't really want to dump this over on the edges because then it'll affect whatever I decide to build on these other islands. And I'm planning on spreading over to here with my residential stuff. So maybe going south this way is the smarter plan. So we'll put our quarry in right there. I probably won't have anybody to work these two for right now. Unless we have more adults growing up. I mean, they are breeding and having lots and lots of children. So that that's good. Ooh, this guy's got mad fish over here. There's a place where I grew up called the Mad Fish. Which was like a restaurant that was really, really terrible. It was like Chinese food. If you took Chinese food and you mixed it with like... It was weird, man. It was like a, it was like a fusion restaurant. But they didn't fuse very well. Like, fusion was an issue for them. Like, I, I don't know. I went there on three or four occasions and was utterly unimpressed every single time. I never had anything good there, but some of my friends really, really seem to like it. It's just like, it's weird foods. Like, they'll have, like, ramen that's got, like, a, like a chicken crust-type deal over the top of the broth. So that it's got like a deep fried kind of chicken thing over the top. Like it's a weird restaurant. Maybe it's just that I like my fuse like my foods pure. When I go out to have Chinese food, I want to have Chinese food. When I go out for Indian, I want to have Indian. When I go out for American, you know, I want to have American. Like I, I like the the combinations of foods in a vacuum. But once you start taking things and being like, no, it's chicken chow mein, but with French fries, I'm like, eh, eh. I start getting nervous. These things don't go together because I'm kind of OCD like that. So now we're producing coal. Is that sexy or is that sexy? So there's the coal right there. They'll start using the coal to fire this, which will make it much more efficient and last a lot longer without somebody having to run around and help out with it. With three fishing boats, we actually seem to have done a pretty good job on food. I was being a little panicky at the beginning, but I was worried. It's just winter right now, so there's not really anything to do. Until we get up to 20 peeps, we don't have to worry about houses because it only takes a couple of, let's see, hospitals improve the health of peeps on the planet and help prevent plagues. It's probably a good idea. Or we can educate people. I don't think we need a cemetery just yet because nobody's died. Offices reduce the paperwork that is generated by jobs on your planet. Failure to people may have dire long-term consequences. Really? I have to do paperwork? Huh. Build me a fort. I don't think... Another building is working this area. I just wanted to have a fort, but I don't know if we have any triangles left. It might be a better plan to bulldoze the farm and put the fort right here in the middle of all of our... It's, it's basically a turret. If you're wondering what the fort does, it's a turret. 
Uh, we can put farms on land of any kind of gap or altitude. And so if we need flat land for a fort... Yeah, there you go. Put the fort in right there. It'll protect us. I probably could have done it more efficiently if I had used that right there because that would have left us space for a house on the other side. But, ah, uh, oh well. No harm, no foul. This building will actually fire missiles and lasers and stuff at any enemies that decide to attack us. A passing ship noticed you. Oh, we're being attacked. Never mind. One second too late. Uh, we're being attacked by space trolls right now, in case you were wondering. The children fight. Everyone fights. Hopefully we'll be able to murder the enemy and come out on top. Unfortunately, their square-like cubic blood is spilling and... Have we won yet? There we go. We won. Destroy their ship. Take their loot. We got a little bit of energy out of their ship and a little bit of steel, I think. Your citizens... Oh, never mind. I clicked on it. I thought it was going to have a pop-up. I'm used to RimWorld, where you click on those and it pops up a big window and then you read. And so I got... See, we were like five seconds too, too late, man. We could have had a Ford up and ready to go. So basically, threats are going to attack your city from time to time, just like in Kingdoms and Castles. You need to have defenses set up. You need to have your people armed. You get to recruit soldiers and stuff like that. And they'll make sure that your planet is safe from the extraterrestrial threat. So there's our fort right there. It'll sit there, it'll fire lasers at enemies, and it will protect us. You definitely want to have that. It's put one of these in the middle of every major population center. One down here, and then once we build over here, I'll probably put one right there because we got a nice little harbor right there, and having a fort on a harbor seems like a tremendously classical thing to do. I don't know what I want to do with my farms do build for you. There we go. We'll put that like maybe... Farms are great for filling in inequitable space. Like areas where you can't build anything else. Farms are fantastic for getting that fixed up. What does that cost me, by the way? Nothing? Good. We're not going to be able to plant for a little bit, but for right now, it should be okay. How are things going over here? Going through electricity kind of rapidly. Got me a little bit worried. So we've generated 9, and we've lost 38. Okay. That's a pretty considerable amount of electricity that we're not producing, but then again, this place only has one worker. And so, sometimes we only have one peep available. Damn it. I think that's because the farm... Maybe? I don't know. I'll take a fisherman off of there. Once we get to the spring season, because we're in winter right now, I think. It looks kind of wintry outside. It's looking a little bit winter fresh right now, all right? It's it's definitely looking like it might be a wintry place to be. I'll start building houses pretty soon. We'll probably fill in this gap right here. Probably put in a hospital around here somewhere, but we don't have the electricity to do it for right now. The other problem is that it's winter. In summer and spring and all those times, we'll actually be gaining electricity, I think. Simply based on the fact that, oh, that's right, I built a stone mine. I forgot I built a stone mine. So that's where our workforce is gone. Pretty much everybody we have right now is already bound up on other tasks. Ooh, spring has sprung. And so now you guys get to see firsthand what planting looks like. Yay. Uh, I have nobody working there. Go ahead and forget the quarry and go work on the farm. I want to have a planting season this year. I guess I could have had one of the fishermen do it. Let's... Do these guys have differing yields? 